Hi, I'm Heidi from Oni Go Stamping. Welcome to my craft corner. Today we are going to be making some really fun wine bottle tags. Now, things are opening back up. People are going back out and doing stuff, right? And maybe you have parties to go to or a birthday party, or maybe you're, you know, just going to a friend's house and you want to say thank you traditional hostess gift, a bottle of wine, right? But let's make it a little bit more fun. We're gonna make a fun handmade wine bottle tag that you can slip right over the top and be able to gift that to a friend and just make it extra special. So I'm really excited to get started. But before I do, if you have any questions about rubber stamping, card making, paper crafting, or stamping up, go ahead and leave me a comment or send me an email. I would be happy to help you in any way that I can. In the description to this video, you're gonna find a bunch of links, including a link to come on over and hang out with me on Facebook, because we have tons of fun over there in my Facebook group. There's a link to sign up for my newsletter, uh, which is a great way to stay in touch and always know what's going on with Onigo Stamping. And then of course, there is a link to hop over to my website and see more photos of today's projects and dimensions and all supply lists, all that kind of good stuff. If you liked today's video, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Okay, on you go, let's get stamping. Let's start by taking a look at the supplies that we're going to use today. So I'm using the Party Puffins stamp set. This is new in the 2021-2022 annual catalog, and I think it's absolutely adorable. It's got some great sentiments in there um, and some adorable little puffins. So I'm using that for our uh, images. Now I am gonna be using a number of dies on this, on these wine tags. However, that being said, you could do these without so many dies. Uh, if you had a circle punch, you could just use that. And then you could just go without dies for the rest of it, just cut um, regular squares. But I'm using dies because I, th I think they add a little bit of fun and I like them. Um, they have some stitching, faux stitching on them, so that's really fun. So I'm using the basic borders dies. I wanna show you these, these are really cute. I got these not too long ago and I have been having a blast with them. So I used all the, I used these dies on uh, all of the, the wine tags that I made and I'm, the one I'm going to show you today, we're going to use it too. So there's that, there's the basic border dies and then I'm going to be using the stitched rectangle dies and the layering circle dies. All right, for the pattern paper, I am using the uh, Euro Peach designer series paper, which I absolutely love. I only have partial sheets of even some of this um, <laughs> because I have just used so much. Oh, but we have some extras in here. All right, we'll set this aside. I, it's kind of chaos of what I have, but I just absolutely love it. It has these beautiful uh, floral and peach designs on one side. You can see all those. Aren't those pretty? So, and I think I have some duplicates there too. Oh, here we go. This one, this is kind of the last of this, I think. Oh, there was a piece in here. So let me show you. I'm just gonna flip this over because then the other side has these really fun patterns. And that's what I really love is using these patterns. Love these patterns, love the colors. These are like my colors. Um, just so much oranginess um, and just absolutely love it. So the Euro Peach, this will be going on sale. This is on sale now. Um, it is part of our designer series paper sale where select designer series papers are 15% uh, off and Euro Peach is one of them. So that's really exciting. All right, let me tell you the dimensions for this. Now there's just a couple of dimensions that you really need to know for this because uh, when I show you the extra samples I have, you'll notice they're all a little bit different size and you can definitely change it up. If you are using the stitched rectangles like I am, then one of the important dimensions you wanna keep in mind is that you want this to be two and seven eighths. All right, two and seven eighths width, um, and then you can change the length a little bit. The other thing that you wanna know, so this is two and seven eighths width. Now my piece here is seven and three quarters, and of course these dimensions will be on my website, so you can check over there for them. So this is seven and three quarters, but really what's most important, because this could change, it could be shorter or longer, what is most important is from here up to the fold is two and a half. So you really want that to be about two and a half. I found that that works well with a variety of wine bottles, right? Because every wine bottle has a different shape and people who are really into wine, they can tell you what type of wine it is based on the shape. I am not that into wine, um, but I know that about two and a half inches is gonna, get, is gonna work for a lot of wine bottles. 
So that's what I have. This is, um, like I said, seven and three quarters and I have scored it at two and a half inches. All right, I wanna prep my materials. I'm gonna grab, so I have the designer series paper. I have some whisper white, or some basic white and some basic black. I'm gonna grab my layering circles. Now, let me see which, I think that it is this one. Yeah, so it is not the smallest circle. This is the smallest circle. It's the second to smallest circle. That one works really well. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my platform here so you can see. We'll set this up. Oh, everything's a mess. My platform's upside down. All right. So I just have my magnetic platform and I have my cutting plate. And then I'm gonna put this circle more towards the back. So I'm gonna to try to center it left to right, but you can see I've really put it more towards the back. I decided I didn't like it um, having a lot of extra cardstock off the back hanging off, but you really need the cardstock here to account for the shape of the wine bottle. So I just kind of push it more towards the back and then try to center it side to side. I don't know if that's centered or not. And then I will just run this through. There is the base for my wine tag. So just pop this out. So there's my basic wine tag right there. We'll fold this and uh, that was just decorating. So set that aside. I wanna cut my other pieces. I'm gonna grab my piece of uh, Europe Peach Designer Series paper. And now is where I'm going to start using the stitched rectangle dies. So I'm gonna pull these out. And again, I need to grab the right one. So I want the one that is just gonna fit, here we go, right inside here. So it is a, like the center one, I guess. Well, it's the fourth largest, like one, two, three, four from the biggest, um, and then the fifth up from the smallest. So, but really it's whatever is gonna fit your tag. Now you could decide, you could make your wine tag um, wider or skinnier and just base that right on, your, uh, on the rectangle that you wanna cut underneath. So, just gonna take this rectangle and lay it on here. I wanna try to get it straight because there are stripes. So <laughs> having it straight is a, is a plus and we'll just run this through. There's my designer series paper. Now I wanna show you, um, show you the sizing on this. You will notice when I put this on my tag, it's not long enough, right? Um, you could do some tricks to get this to be longer. I'm gonna do two pieces of paper. So, um, you could make a shorter tag too, right? If you wanted to, you could just make the tag the size to fit this. Uh, but I wanted a, you know, a little bit longer. I like the idea of it being kind of long versus the width. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my designer series paper. I'm gonna grab a piece of basic white and then I'm gonna cut the same size rectangle from the basic white. So this is kind of a multi-step process. So we're gonna cut this from the basic white. When I went to cut this, I did have a little bit of, of a problem. Some of you might have this problem too. When you go to cut with the stitched rectangles, um, they can be hard to run through the machine, right? So what is really helpful is to try to get them a little bit on an angle. Now, even more of an angle would have been better, um, but that just little slight angle was enough to help me push that through. So if you're having trouble, try not to you know, put them through straight, try to put them on an angle, uh, and that will just run through better. So now I have this piece of basic white cut with the stitched rectangles. We'll put that away. And I'm going to grab my basic border dies. And I wanna use this little cloud looking one that is over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off the bottom of this piece of basic white with the cloud. And I just wanna make sure I'm gonna lay my designer series paper on there. And I just wanna make sure I get this up. I'm gonna put it up just a tiny a tiny bit higher. Just to make sure. All right, and we'll run this through. So here is the white part for the front of our of our wine tag. And we'll put my dies away because we are done with the die cutting. 
Now you have two pieces. You could use both these pieces and one of the samples I'm going to share with you does use both the pieces um, and kind of, you know, separates them like that. I'm just going to use the bottom piece. I'm going to set this aside for another project. And I'm going to start by layer, laying this out for you so you can start to see. So we're going to have this piece up here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just adhere this down. We're ready to hear this part. We're going to make the rest of the decoration in just a minute. So just taking a little bit of multi-purpose glue. Of course, it's not wanting to start. Does that ever happen to you? It happens to me all the time. I store my glue upside down so that it, it, it will start, but it still has an issue. And then it comes out too much. All right. So I have my piece of the blue stripe designer series paper. This is just going to go right towards the top here. And then I want to come in. I'm going to grab some Stampin' Dimensionals. I have a brand new sheet of Dimensionals to start. And we're just going to put Dimensionals on the back of this. I love the stitching on the edges of these basic border dies. It just gives it such a nice little finished edge to it. in there I'm putting a bunch on here just to make sure it's nice and supported all right I have my take your pick tool I'm just gonna grab these off I love this because it holds on to all those little bits and then I can get them all in my trash can and then this piece is gonna go right down here and I want to make sure the sides line up so we get it nice there we go and that cute you'd never know that it doesn't go all the way through all right let's do the rest of the decoration i'm going to grab my piece of basic white and i want to grab my little puffins i'm going to take this one that's kind of bending over i'm going to use him and i'm going to grab the cake as well put the cake over here and then since i have this out i'm going to just grab the happy birthday We'll just put the happy birthday over here on a block. So I'm going to start with my puffin and my cake. I'm just using my uh, Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad. Now I always, you'll notice it was upside down. I always keep these upside down just so that the ink is near the top. And then usually when I use it, I hold the ink pad and ink up my stamp. I think with the felt ink pads, that just really um, helps you a little bit. So... All right, stamp him down, give him some nice pressure. And then we'll do the little cake too. All right. There we go. All right, let's do a little bit of coloring. So primarily on these, I used pale papaya, because that is what I've been using all the time in Calypso Coral. Um, these are the colors that are in, that are in, let me see if I can even talk, <laughs> that are in the Euro Peach Designer Series paper. Now, unfortunately, I do not have balmy blue, um, I don't have balmy blue Stampin' Blends. So instead, I'm completely losing my words. Instead, I'm using some old light seafoam, the dark seafoam. Uh, spray seaside spray sorry so this is a retired color you could use balmy blue I believe there are I'll have to check I don't even know I think there are blends in balmy blue you could also probably substitute in some pool party so I'm gonna start with my light pale papaya and I just color his little beak and his feet with the light pale papaya and then I think I'm gonna color the base of my cake with the light pale papaya. And we'll come in with the dark pale papaya and do just a little bit of shading. I'll just put some right in here along the bottoms of his feet. I'm going to come in under the icing and do it there. a little bit of shade all right there we go 
Now I think I want to do the light Calypso coral. We'll do the other part of his beak in that. And then I'm going to do the plate in light Calypso coral. And the candles. There we go. And then I'll come in, of course, with the dark Calypso coral and just do a little bit more blending, shading. Just a little bit. I find that there's some of the the lights and the darks and the Stampin blends are very close, and some of them are a little bit further apart. So, all right, now I have the light seaside spray, and I'm going to color in the icing. I have some blue icing on this cake. I'm gonna come in with the dark seaside spray. There we go. And then of course I need just a little bit of yellow. So let's, I'm gonna grab my So Saffron, the dark So Saffron, and just color in the flames on my candles. And then I'm going to fussy cut these. I know fussy cutting is always like um, an evil word for some people, but I don't mind doing it too much as long as there's not too much of it. And these are pretty easy images to fussy cut. So I always just leave a little bit of a border. You'll notice I mostly turn the paper and not my scissors. And I keep my stampin' snips, my snip, my paper snips, I should say, keep them the same and then mostly turn the paper. And you'll notice I did just, you know, cut across the paper. Sometimes it um, can be hard to cut closely if you have too much paper, if there's just getting too much bulk. So sometimes I just cut it off. Just give myself a little bit more space. And sometimes I'll even go in and I will just cut, you know, really a big circle around the image to give myself room to do the fussy cutting. There, we almost have our puff in, and then we'll have to do the cake too. I just think these guys look so cute when they're cut out, especially when they're hanging out on a cloud. All right, so there's our puff in, and I'm gonna come in and do the cake. I'm just gonna cut that out, give myself some space here. And again, these aren't terribly intricate, and I'm not going to cut between every candle. <laughs> that I'm just going to leave. I'll cut kind of down between the flames here, but I'm not going to do a really close cutting job. And like I said, I always leave a little bit of a border. So just like your dies do, right? Your dies don't usually cut right up to the edge. They leave a tiny border. And that is what I do when I'm fussy cutting too. All right, just another turn around here and under the plate and there we go there's our cake so now we're going to add our little puff in to our card and he's going to get some stampin dimensionals too so i'm going to kind of leave his feet because his feet are going to be on the cloud Put some dimensionals on here, just like this. We're gonna put some dimensionals on the cake too. There we go. I'm gonna take your pick tool. I'm gonna start pulling off with my fingers, which I can do, but inevitably I get part way through and I'm, or I pull off one or two, and I get annoyed because there's 
little backings everywhere. All right, so our little Puffin, he's gonna be kind of leaning over. All right, just like that, because he is carrying a birthday cake on his back. He is a very talented little Puffin. There we go. Isn't he cute? All right, now let's make a little sentiment for this to say happy birthday. I'm gonna grab my Versamark pad. So I'm gonna do some white embossing on black cardstock just to give it a little pop. So I'm just inking this up with Versamark ink. And you know what? I'm gonna grab my static bag first just wipe that on here and hopefully get rid of some of the static all right we'll stamp this up and it doesn't matter exactly what you do we're going to cut this off so the size on this is not important i'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper and i have some white embossing powder so let's just go right on the happy birthday give it a little flick Worked well. I don't even need to take my take my uh, brush to it. I don't think. All right, this is gonna this is gonna go back in my bin. This is why embossing powder lasts forever, <laughs> or at least it seems like it lasts forever. All right, and we'll just heat this. I've heated my embossing powder so it's all melted and it's all nice and shiny on there and I just want to use my paper snips and I'm going to cut out this happy birthday. You could use your trimmer if you wanted um, but I just use my snips. And I'm actually going to cut them apart. There we go. And these are going to go up here. I find that the black, the, the black cardstock, it kind of balances out the little puffin. Like I feel like the puffin is all by himself being really stark black on here. So adding just a little bit of black for the sentiment really helps, uh, helps pull that out. And of course I'm putting these on dimensionals too. Everything's on dimensionals. Now, if you've cut your strips a little bit too skinny, you'll just need to either cut your dimensionals or use the mini dimensionals. But mine were just wide enough to hold those. All right, I wanna start with the birthday. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the backs off all these. So just a couple more steps and then I'm gonna show you some more samples too. All right, so here's my birthday right there and then we'll put happy over here I have some of the artistry blooms sequins these are self-adhesive sequins I absolutely love these I'm so glad that they carried over from um, last year's catalog because they're gorgeous I'm gonna grab the pool party ones now I know that this is balmy blue not pool party but with these sequins it's okay <laughs> you won't you won't really notice and I like the big ones are a little bit too big for me like, I don't, I don't usually just like them all by themselves, but I do like to just tuck them up underneath things. So I'm just tucking those up under the sentiment. And we'll add some small ones on there too. Let me see, what else, one more? There we go. So just a really fun, birthday surprise right there so there's our fun wine bottle tag isn't that cute let me show you a couple more samples so here we have one now this one is calypso coral for the back um, this is also from the you're a peach designer series paper and here for the sentiment, I have used the biggest wish stamp set. So isn't that cute? All right. And then the third one, and you can see this one is a different size. It's shorter. 
and this one's also shorter. Like all three of them are different sizes. So this one, I actually took that white square and I used the basic border die and I cut it in two and then I used both of those and I put a piece of the designer series paper underneath. What do you think? Is that a cool, cool little technique? And then of course I first stamped this with the, um, with the candles and embossed them, right? I don't remember if I use clear or white, either one will work, I embossed them. Then I took my blending brush and a little bit of pale papaya and I just blended this whole thing. So, and then I flicked on some drops of Calypso coral ink. So that one was kind of a little bit more in depth, a little more involved um, with all the ink blending and stuff, but really a fun tag. So three different tags with the party puffins. Weren't those fabulous wine bottle tags? I can't wait to go visit somebody and take them a fabulous bottle of wine with a cute little tag. If you liked today's video, make sure that you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and then come on back and see me for more tips, techniques, and inspiration. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.